And now let's create this LED blinker class. So the LED blinker will make an LED blink without using the delay function. Okay, because when you use the delay function, you are blocking the entire program and that's not really good. And you won't be able to do many actions at the same time. So we are going to solve the delay problem basically inside the class. And because it is inside the class, all of the timing functionalities with milis, etc. will be hidden from the main program. Okay, you will just have an abstraction of an LED blinker. So basically you create an LED blinker on top of a class LED. And then with just one line in the void loop, you will be able to make the LED blink at any rate you want. And you will be able to do anything else you want in your program because the program will not be stuck. And so this requires, of course, a few steps to do. And the first step, as always, is to create this LED blinker class and initialize it with the bare minimum. And actually, well, we already have created an LED class. So the LED blinker class will use the LED class. Okay, we don't need to recreate everything. Okay, we can already use the blocks and the class that we have created to create new classes on top of them. So here I have created a new sketch, a new uh, program. I am going to first save it as, let's say, LED blinker. Okay. And I am going to go to sketch, show sketch folder. And from there, so I have nothing. I'm going to go back and to the, let's say the push button. No, the push button didn't have the LED. LED is a button. And I'm going to take this LED class and put it. So just copy it and put it in the LED blinker like this. Okay. And I'm going to restart the Arduino IDE. Okay, great. And now we have the LED class here that we are going to use in our LED blinker class. So time to create the LED blinker class. I click here, new tab. So I choose LED blinker.h and I'm going to create an also LED blinker.cvp. Okay. So as always, implementation file, interface file. And in the header file, the first thing I'm going to do is to add the include guard. So if n def, let's say LED underscore blinker underscore h, define and the exact same thing here. And then at the end, end if. Great. In between, I can create my class. So class LED blinker, curly brackets, semicolon. Let's put that here. And let's put private, put private actually with zero indentation and public. And before we write the uh, delay functionality without uh, actually delay, so we're using the milis and the time functionalities, what we can do already is to initialize this with the LED that we are going to need to use. So as a private attribute, I'm going to add an LED object. Okay, so this is the first time that instead of using just a standard variable with a standard data type, you use a class, okay, inside a class. So here we have the LED class and we have an LED object, okay, inside the LED blinker class. So whenever you create an LED blinker object from the class, you will also have an LED uh, inside that you have to uh, create or give to the class. And very important here, because I use LED here, well, I need to include, so after the header guards, of course, always, include LED.h. I need to include the LED header file inside my uh, LED blinker header because I use LED here. If I don't do this, I will have a compilation error because LED here is not known. Okay, and one thing I can also add, because I'm going to use the Arduino functionalities, include Arduino.h, like this, with angle brackets. This actually, here, it's going to work if you don't put this. Why is that? Because if you include LED.h, you already have include Arduino.h inside the LED.h, okay? So 
this you may not want to put it but let's put it anywhere because anyway in the arduino.h you also have like this you have header guards so basically you could include the arduino library as many times as you want it's not going to be a problem it's going to be included just once and here we make it clear that in this class we are going to use the arduino functionality so that's not going to do any harm here great so we have our leds so of course now the next thing is to create a constructor so led blinker i'm going to create a default constructor okay that we are not going to use do not use and i'm going to create a another constructor led blinker and to this we are going to pass the led object so how are we going to compose different classes together well first in your program you will have to create an led object after you create an led object you create an led blinker object and to this led blinker you pass the led object as a parameter okay so you don't create the led we don't create with a dynamic allocation the led inside the led blinker okay we are going to create it before and what i can do here is i can add an ampersand why is that this ampersand basically will tell the function to just take the reference okay of the object if you don't put the ampersand it may create a copy of the object so you create an led and then you are going to create a copy of the led here what you want to do instead is to use the same led so program will be better and also use less memory so whenever i'm going to pass an object here as a parameter and when i want to use that object i'm going to add ampersand so i pass the reference to the object so the led blinker will get an led from the outside and it will not create a new one okay it will just keep a reference to that object great and now in the implementation of the led blinker let's add include led blinker dot h so i of course include the header file for the cpp file and then i am going to add so this for the constructor i'm going to add led blinker colon colon led blinker and do the implementation and here nothing different from before this led is equal to led so because i use ld here and because i use ld here this is the same name i have to use this so there is no confusion great so we have our first step which is to create the led blinker class and add an led inside this class what i can also do i'm going to do that now void init led i'm going to add a void init led as a public method here so that's going to be part of the interface that you can use when you create an object because let's say you pass an led you don't necessarily know if the led is initialized okay with pin mode output so i'm going to add a method here that will be quite convenient so from the led blinker we can directly initialize the led okay so init led i'm going to copy this right here and i'm going to put so i'm going to put this put it inside the led blinker class remove semicolon call it brackets and what I'm going to do to initialize the LED is very simple. I'm going to do LED dot init. As you can see here, I use the init, the init which is here, which is a public method of the LED class. So from the LED blinker, I have an object LED. And from that object, I can call any public function. So I simply call the init method from the LED object. So you can see that's very powerful. Inside a class, you can have other classes, other objects, and you can call the function, the public functions of those objects. So here to initialize the LED, I don't need to think about uh, the pin mode or anything else. I just do LED init, okay? And the LED init will be in charge of doing the pin mode. So here with the LED blinker, we have a higher level context, okay? We are not going to deal with hardware directly. We are going to let the LED class deal with hardware. And the LED blinker will just monitor the LED and make it blink by calling the different functions of the LED. Okay, to add another layer of functionality 
on top of the AD. Great, so it seems that it's good for now. What I'm going to do in the main, so let's actually verify the code first. Let's see if that works. So we don't have any compilation error, okay? Now, I'm going to show you something uh, here. In the ld.h, okay? I have previously told you that you need a default constructor, okay? If you don't use the default constructor, for example, if I want to use this, I still need to implement a default constructor. Let's say I don't implement this default constructor here now. So this is commented. I'm going to verify the code again. And we have an error, okay? And this error is maybe not super, super explicit, but this is the kind of error you have if you have forgotten to add a default constructor and then you use the class inside another class, okay? As you can see here, no matching function for call to LED, LED. This is because here I use, uh, in the LED blinker, I use the LED. And when I use the LED, it's going to uh, look for the default constructor here, which is not found, so you get an error, okay? So that's the reason why you have to at least implement a default constructor like this. So it's going to compile, okay? It's not going to add any functionality, but it's just going to make your program compile, which is a good thing. So now in the main program, I am going to do include. So I'm going to include LED dot H and I'm going to include LED blinker dot H. Okay. Because what I need to do first, I need to create an LED. So let's create an LED on pin number 11. So let's do things clearly here. Define LED pin 11. And I'm going to put that here. And now I'm going to do LED blinker. Let's call it LED blinker like this. So when you just have uh, one instance of a um, class he here, well, you may just use the same name, but just replace the first letter instead of uppercase, you use lowercase. Okay, that's what I usually do. And then in the LED blinker, we need, so again, we have the default constructor we are not going to use. And we have this constructor where we need to pass the LED. So we need to pass, as you can see here, this is a reference to the LED. But when you have reference, you don't need, uh, when you call the function, you don't need to actually do anything else than just put the name of the object. And like this, we have created first. So this is important. You need to first create the LED object and then create the LED blinker and pass the LED object to the LED blinker. Okay, so in the void setup, now what you can do well, you have two options. You can do led.init or you can also do led blinker.init, actually init led, because that's the init led function here. All right, let's compile this, see if it works. Okay, great. So now we have the first step, which is the structure of the led blinker, and we have put the led inside the led blinker, as well as initializing the LED correctly. 